Please note, the following image is of an extremely distressing nature. Viewer discretion is advised. This distressing and tormenting image is titled Vulture and the Little Girl, but it's also known as The Struggling Girl. It was taken in 1993. It is an image of a starving boy, which at first was believed to have been a girl. He has collapsed on his way to the United Nations Feeding Centre, close to the town of Ayod in South Sudan. If this wasn't a tough enough photograph to look at, what makes it even more heartbreaking is the patiently waiting hooded vulture in the background. The photographer who took this grim image was a South African called Kevin Carter. The picture took home the Pulitzer Prize for feature photography in 1994. Carter was in the Sudan because in 1993, a handful of journalists and photographers were invited by the UN Operation Lifeline to report and raise awareness to the ongoing famine. At one point, up to 13 adults were dying of starvation in Iod alone. Carter was joined by a Portuguese-born South African war photographer, Huayo Silva. Their journey was filled with peril, as there was still plenty of fighting going on in Sudan. When they flew in from Nairobi to Iod, Silva described the small town as full of flies and hungry people. The two photographers soon separated to record images of the living and the dead. Throughout their trip, Carter continually told Silva that what he was witnessing was affecting him emotionally. Just before they were due to leave after spending a week being escorted by rebel soldiers, Carter came across a situation which would change his world. Near the runway, he came across the withered shape of a child lying face down, in the hot sun, and took his shot. When the two photographers met back up, Carter reported what he had seen. You won't believe what I've just shot. I was shooting this kid on her knees, and then changed my angle, and suddenly there was this vulture right behind her, and I just kept shooting, shot lots of film. Carter did not say he had helped the child, but he did say he had chased the vulture off. His melancholy soon bit home when he said, I see all this, and all I can think of is Megan. In 2011, the child's father came forward and said it was his boy and that he had actually survived. His name was Kong Neong, and according to his family, died of a fever in 2007. The reaction to the publication of this startling image was one of total shock. Carter came under immediate criticism. A newspaper remarked, the man adjusting his lens to take just the right frame of her suffering might just as well be a predator, another vulture on the scene. Public opinion condemned Carter, not for taking the picture, nor chasing the vulture immediately away, but for the fact that he did not help the girl afterwards. As Carter explained later, he regretted leaving her in such a weak condition to continue the march by herself towards the feeding centre. However, at the time, journalists were told not to touch famine victims for fear of spreading disease. Carter himself estimated that there were 20 people per hour dying at the food centre. Even though the suffering and privations of the child was not unique, Carter continued to argue that there was not much that he could have done. This tale also ends in darkness for Kevin Carter. It is impossible to imagine what these images would do to our minds if we saw them in the flesh. It certainly took its toll on the journalists in the Sudan, and in Carter's case, fatally. Day after day, Carter found solace in cocaine and other drug abuse, which would help him cope with his occupation's horror. Confiding in his friend Judith Matloff, a war correspondent, she said he would talk about the guilt of the people he couldn't save because he photographed them as they were being killed. It would soon trigger a spiral into depression. Another friend, Reed Van Wally, says, You could see it happening. You could see Kevin sink into a dark fug. A year after he took the image of the child and the vulture, he committed suicide. He drove to Parkmore, where he used to play as a child and attached a hose to his car's exhaust. He died of carbon monoxide poisoning, aged just 33. His suicide note is as painful to read 
as his most famous photograph is to look at. I'm really, really sorry. The pain of life overrides the joy to the point that joy does not exist. Depressed, without money, without phone, money for rent, money for child support, money for debts, money. I am haunted by the vivid memories of killings and corpses and anger and pain, of starving or wounded children, of trigger-happy madmen, of police, of killer executioners. I have gone to join Ken, if I am that lucky.